Um, 85% of private schools in the United States are faith-based, mm -hmm. um, yet they're not required by law to educate children with learning differences or special needs. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask, you know, from you, you know, what are your thoughts on maybe how that can be changed? And I know that's a big question, um, but just overall, how do you think that we can, we can change that? Well, I think, uh, I'm sorry to say, I think most faith-based institutions and uh, most people who practice their faith uh, have fallen in love with power. Uh, and only of a certain kind of power. And we have to end our love affair with power. Uh, uh, power is control, power is money, power is success. Um, if you look at the great religions, I mean, uh, if you look at Christianity, I, I, I think to myself, what happened to the cross? Mm -hmm. You know, if I think of Judaism, what happened to the prophets? If I think of uh, uh, the Buddhist, I mean, I don't know the Eastern traditions as well, but in the, in, in, in the United States and Islam, and, and these are religions of peace, of compassion. The highest value is the welcoming of the stranger. And we built all these schools that exclude them. Uh, why? Because we bought into this idea that the hierarchy of learning should be defined by the capacity to uh, have and retain power. The very power that most faith-based movements eschew in their texts and disdain in their liturgies and their rituals and try to fight in their faith commitments. So uh, it's just, it's been a blind spot, I think. Uh, I think education, educational models that created hierarchies of intelligence uh, overtook religion and religions bought into them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they use the same screening techniques to exclude or welcome children. Uh, what are your scores on this test or that test? Where does that appear in a biblical text in the Quran? Uh, only accept children with certain test scores? I mean, can you imagine speaking to Jeremiah or Isaiah or Moses or Jesus or Paul and saying to Mary Magdalene, we've decided to create schools to follow this religion and they will uh, uh, allow children into them based on their test scores. I mean, they would have thought they were talking to aliens. Uh, That's the exact, you know, ironic situation that I found myself in. It's the very yeah. uh, tenets of faith and what that stands for, you know, what it, what it um, promotes is not what's actually in practice no. at school. I mean, and I don't think it's out of malice. I just think no. it's, a it's been a blind spot. And I think once faith-based leaders um, are invited to look differently at children with differences, you know, maybe there'll be a screening device uh, that tests children about how loving they are. And maybe we'll be able to create a school with the most loving children. Uh, and that'll be the hierarchy. I mean, not that I'm f in favor of any hierarchies, but uh, I, I don't know how, I mean, I do know how, but here we are. Uh, it is a moment of conversion. Uh, I think religiously based uh, educational institutions are being invited by mothers and fathers and uh, community leaders and uh, and all of us are I mean we're all culpable in this I don't point the finger at anybody I sent my children to these same schools and you know uh, so I, I'm not uh, I'm not in a position of judge here I'm just in a position of being invited into a conversion and, uh, and that's what religion is supposed to be good at and uh, if we pay attention I think all of us who consider ourselves to be committed to faith-based models of living and learning uh, I think we have an, a moment now uh, where we can uh, we can convert. Right. 